You know, social media um, is interesting. I think there's been a lot of social media about many different things. Um, but I think when it affects you or you feel uh, personally affected by it, um, it's a challenge. Um, I know there's been some, some social media going around about um, lack of sheets and people having to purchase sheets. Um, and I'm going to bring it up because, like I tell you before, I transfer it. There's nothing to hide, right? And, sheets, and, and, and to be honest, we don't have a challenge for that. What I would say is around that period, just to bring that to very, very clear, around the time that um, um, a few patients were admitted, this was at the same time you remember, right, when the hospital had a challenge with two laundry members being positive, and all of the laundry staff, by common sense, you have to pull them. You can't let people continue to work when they could possibly have COVID, right? So they were pulled from, from the facilities. And there was a delay on that day in getting laundry. But client relations who were sitting next to me dealt with that, and dealt with that particular incident, and talking to the patients who were on the ground, um, and talking to specific uh, persons of interest who may have even posted this. Um, and, um, and it was handled. So within about an hour or two, um, laundry was here. The laundry team for the hospital was down. Um, I hate to give timings, um, to, to, timings, but it was around that time, and they did receive. I think in that particular situation, um, the individual chose to purchase sheets for their beds. That was their choice. It wasn't that they were not available. I think it would be hard for you to walk around the facility and ask any person if they don't get the, the, their bed in, and they, they, they will tell you they do. So things like that. It's hurtful to the laundry staff. They put in a huge effort on the facility. It's not easy. It really is not, right? And then the nursing staff will have to go in and make beds and housekeeping and have to clean them, etc. And if you have to wait, you know, a few hours because there's a national challenge, it's not a harshest point challenge. That was a national challenge at the time um, to receive that. Then, you know, I think people need to be understanding. Don't pull us down. What, what did I say to you before? What's the most important thing? in this, that we need to be together as a country, as countrymen, even if we disagree. Even if we disagree, or we object, or we don't like something, even we need to be together. Because at the end of the day, right, if we disagree and become disruptive, right, I believe that we'll fall apart in this COVID response. Right, I understand that people who come here and are asymptomatic, or have mild symptoms, they're not happy to be here. Would you be? No, right? After the first two, three days and you feel well, you're like, I need to get from here, right? But it's an obligation in a way. Why do I say that? It's an obligation to us as healthcare professionals to watch those people because we've seen many of them who love, well, my ICU doctors in the room, Dr. Love is there, right? And Dr. Graham is in the room, right? We have seen people who have been well, including visitors, who have not been happy to be here, who in next two to three days are ended up, ended up in our ICU. And I can give that example because I think it's a great one, right? Who in two to three days, right? I have to give the example, have to, right? In two to three days after saying, I don't want to be here, why am I here? I'm feeling well, they ended up in ICU. First, it was the husband. But the next day, it was the wife. You know who I'm talking about. It was the wife. And after all of this, what did they do? I wish I could share it with you. They sent a wonderful letter. I can ask if I could share it and give it to y'all. Right? And they sent a wonderful letter back to say, if they were in the UK, the level of care that they got here, they would have never got in the UK, let alone the fancy drugs that we gave them across the street. Right? And they wrote me personally. I got an email from them personally. I can't show you. Or that one, email for your person to say, we just had a son. And his name, you know what we name him? Guess what they name him? Harrison. <laughs> that is not a joke. It's real. And I, 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 I'm hoping that I am authorized to release, release it to you. That is one of many. Those are success stories that we need to talk about and to be proud of for COVID management facility in this country, right? And if you see something, if you come in here, you see something that is needed, that we don't have, be proud that we, we get you to a point where you can walk over here and give back. But don't pull us down, I'm begging you, right? Don't pull us down.
That is but one example. Right? I could give you another one, but I, I don't want to, want, to, want to talk too much. But, but that one, I think, was, for me, one of the, one of the better uh, of the stories. But there are so many that you won't believe. We have had, and I, I, I'm not to share this in here, but we've had people in here of many different walks in life. We had movie stars in here, but you wouldn't know. I tell it life. <laughs> we had, and they never complained. We had family of movie stars in here. I tell it life. A big okay. one. Okay. A big one. If I told them, they'd be shocked, right? Yeah. And it wasn't here. <laughs> we had parents of international football, not football, basketball, right? Okay. Basketball, well. a very big basketball players in this facility. They never complained. They were happy and content, right? We had ambassadors in here. We had, be very, very so careful, many. so many different people <laughs> of so many walks of life. I could go through. I would tell you the names after, but I would get in trouble, right? that were here, right? And you would not believe there was no complaints and the people were happy. In fact, one guy who's, gotta be careful, right? He donated $50,000 to this facility in two parts. You know why? Not because you think that we were not good. He's like, this is very good. Y'all have a good thing going here. The staff is good down to the housekeeping, to the RDs, everybody's friendly. He said, I could not have asked for better. And this is, this is, he said, this is a minimum amount of what I can give. Anything else that I can give, I will give. That is exactly what people from outside are saying. And I think all old local people need to be more together and be supportive of this COVID management facility. 